Hello, welcome back. Last time we talked about the bubble sort algorithm, which is a simple, straightforward, but not very efficient sorting algorithm. Today we're going to look at one that's much more efficient in merge sort. Now merge sort is more efficient, but it's also a bit more complex. So we'll go through the inner workings of it and then, and then look at some code for it. Merge sort is one of those algorithms that is best accomplished with recursion. So this will be a recursive algorithm too. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have another array of unsorted data, and we're going to talk about how the merge sort algorithm works to sort, and it's quite different from the way bubble sort works. And so the recursive idea here is actually kind of simple, and this algorithm shares some sort of DNA and way of thinking with binary search in that it's based on splitting things in half. So with merge sort, what we do is we split the array clean in half, which in this case, it splits nicely because it's size 16. So we have eight on the left and eight on the right. So split the array is sort of the first step. Step two is sort the left half. So we're going to go ahead and sort this left half of the array. Step three is to sort the right half. So we're also going to sort the right half of the array. And both of those things are going to be done recursively. So we're gonna use the same process we're using for the overall array to sort the sub halves as well. So then once these are sorted, all we have to do is merge them back together, which we're gonna talk about in detail. So let's, let's short circuit the recursion now, and let's just imagine that the left half and the right half were themselves sorted. That would look like this. Okay, so now if you look at it, the left half is sorted and the right half is sorted. And so now what we have to do is we have to merge them back together. To do that, we'll make a new copy of the array. Okay, so now we've made the second array of the same size. And now we're going to merge these two halves, the left half and the right half into the new array. And so in order to do that, we're going to basically put indices on the beginning of the left half and the beginning of the right half. And we're going to keep looping until one of these runs out. Each time through this loop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare to these two numbers and see which one's smaller. The one that's smaller, will copy down into our new array and then increment this index here of the new array and whichever one we pulled from. So now we see that the left half has the smaller item, the three. So we pull the three here and then we increment this index here indicating that the next spot we're going to copy into is this empty one. And then we increment this left index as well, which leaves us like this. Now we're going to again compare what's next in the left half and what's next in the right half. Now we see that the one from the right half is smaller. So we're going to copy the seven down into the new array and then move the both the indices, the one on the right here and the one from this array. So now it looks like this. And again, we're gonna go through and pick the smaller of these two numbers, and the smaller of them is the 15. So we copy the 15 into the next available slot and then move both our indices, leaving us in this state here. Now we again compare the left and the right values and find the one on the left this time is smaller. So we'll take that value, the 21, copy it down and move our indices. We're gonna compare now the 28 and the 36, finding that the 28 is the smaller of the two values. So we copy that one, move the indices, and end up in this position. Now of the two ones we're looking at, the 36 is the one that's smaller. So we copy it down and move the two indices, leaving us in this position. Now we'll take the 42, of course, increment the index over here, take the 48, increment this index, take the 57, and I'm speeding up a little bit because I think you'll see where this is going. Take then the 61 from this side, and then the 64 from the left, the 78 from the right, leaving us down here, the 82 from the left, and then the 88 from the left, and then we run out of stuff on the left-hand side. So at that point, we just copy whatever's remaining from the right half of the array down into the new one, the 90 and the 96. And now that's what this merge step means. It means going through this process of taking the smaller one from the left and right half, 
one by one until we filled out our array. At that point, the merge sort algorithm is finished and our array is sorted. Now, the trick of this, of course, is that we use the same process to do the overall sorting to do the left and right half sorting. And the magic of recursion is that that just works. Let's go through another quick example where we like drill down into the smaller pieces and go through all the way down until we're done. I'll do it with a smaller array of just size eight. Okay, so here we go. Here we have a new array of size eight and we're going to merge sort it and we're going to drill down into the recursive call so we see how this is going to work. Well, we go ahead and do our first step. Let me put the algorithm back up here. Okay, so we go ahead and we do the first step and merge sort the left half which is these four items here. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call ourselves on that part of the array. So let's drill down. Okay, I made a copy of that array. And so now we're, we sort of have these different levels. Here we have level one of the recursion with the initial call. And now we're sort of at level two of the recursion. So we're still not done sorting the overall array, but now we're sorting the left half. Well, in order to do that, we're going to follow these same instructions here. And the first step says to merge sort the left half. So I'm again going to pull the left half out and merge sort it. And so now we have a level three of this. And now we say that we're going to merge sort the left half of this array as well. And so now this is just this one item being merge sorted. And so now we're down here in level four. and we need a base case here. So we didn't put in a base case for this algorithm. So let's go ahead and do it now. What should the base case be? Well, I think we would all agree that if we have an array that only has one thing in it like this, then it's gotta be sorted, right? You can't sort something that only has one element regardless of what the element is. If there's only one of them, it's in order with itself. And so for the first kind of step here, we're gonna have the base case and we're gonna say, if the array has one item, or if it has zero items, because if the array is totally empty, then it's completely sorted too, right? If there's no items, then you can't say there's anything to do. There's nothing out of order. So this here is sort of our base case. If the array is empty or has only one item, there's nothing to do and we should just return right away. And so that is true in this case. And so level four hits the base case and so we're done and we go back up to level three. So then in level three, we've done step one, and now we have to merge sort the right half. That's going to drop us down to level four here again. And then here, we're gonna hit the base case again, right? Because this only has one item. And so we'll say this is done and we return back up. So now back in level three, we've done step one, we've done step two, and now we have to do step three and merge the two halves together. Well, that isn't really going to do anything in this case, but we can go through the exercise of it. We're gonna make a new array. We're going to copy the smallest thing from each half in. And so at first that's the 19. And so then we run out of array on the left. And so then we're gonna copy from everything on the right, which is the 90. And then we're gonna copy back up onto here. As you can see though, these were already in order so that doesn't actually do anything. In some of the other examples though, it's going to. And so now at this point, we have done the sorting of level three of the subarray of 19 and 90. And so that returns back up to level two. And so now in level two, we have done step one here. We've merged sort at the left, and now we need to merge sort the right half of this. So now it looks like this. So now we have to merge sort this subarray. Well, what's gonna happen now is we're going to merge, merge sort the left half, which is just the 36 by itself. That's the base case, so we're done. Then we have to merge sort the right half, which is this the 26 by itself, and so that's done. Then we have to merge the two halves together. And so in doing that, we're going to do the same algorithm we talked about before, where we sort of keep track of where we are in the left half and the right half, and take the smallest each time. The smallest at first is the 26, and then we're going to see that we ran out of the right half. So we copy everything remaining from the left half, which is just the 36. Then we copy that back onto the array that we have. So that served to swap those two items around when we did that. And so now we're done merging those two halves together. And so now therefore we're done with the merge sorting of this right half and we have to copy the results back up into the original array, which will give us this. Now the left half of this, which is this part, 
and the right half of this, which is this part, have been themselves sorted. So the left half of level two is sorted and the right half of level two is sorted. Now what we have to do is merge that part of it. So again, we're gonna make the new array and we're gonna keep track of where we are in the left half and where we are in the right half and take the smallest item at each step. That's going to be the 19 at first. So we take the 19 and then we increment that index to be here. Then we take the smallest one remaining, which is the 26, incrementing that index to be here. And then the 36, and then we increment that index past the end and see that we are out of right half. So we take everything remaining from the left half, which is just the 90. And so now this is the array we're going to be using as our new left half. So we copy that up, giving us this. And then we copy that up in place of the original left half of the array back in level one. So I didn't draw my lines quite as neat and tidy, but back up in level one, we've now completed step one. This left half of the array has been sorted. And so now what we need to do is we need to move on to step two of this, which is to merge sort recursively the right half of the array, which is this portion. Well, to do that, of course, what we're going to do is we're gonna make a new recursive call and copy that down. So we're now on level two of the recursion. To sort this array of four elements, we're going to first sort the array of two elements here. So we're now on level three of the recursion, sorting the subarray of just 54 and three. To do that, we sort the left half, which is the array of just 54, and we can say that that one's done. Then we sort the subarray of just three, and we can say that one's done. Those are our base cases, remember. Then we have to do the merge step. And so in doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to merge these two elements together. And we're going to put the three here and the 54 here, because that's what's gonna happen when we do our, our merge algorithm. We're gonna take the three first and then copy the 54 in the end. And so that's gonna be cascaded back up into level two. So our three and our 54 got swapped around and now this left half is sorted. The next step then is to recursively merge sort this right half here. And so in doing that, we're going to call the merge sort method again recursively. So now we're down here on level three. To do that, we're going to do step one, merge sort the left half. We'll realize that that hits the base case, right? And so 78 by itself is sorted. Then we'll merge sort the right half, which will again hit the base case, just 21 by itself is merge sorted. Then we're going to do the merge algorithm. And so again, we're going to keep track of where we are in the left half and the right half, take the smaller one, which is the 21, which we'll put in here. And then we'll copy everything from the left half, which is the 78. And so we're going to use this and copy it back up for the right half of this array. And so this is feeling tedious, but we're almost done here. We've merged sorted the left half of this array and the right half of this array. Now we need to do the merge of these two things. And so we'll make a new array of the same size, size four, and we'll keep track of our indices on the left and our index on the right and take the smaller of the two. That's the three, and then we index this one. Then it's the 21, and we index this one. Then it's the 54, and then we ran out of stuff in the left, and so we copy everything remaining from the right, which is the 78. And then we're going to use this for the right half of the original array, returning it back. And so here we are now back up in level one. We've recursively merged sorted the left half of this array and we've recursively merged sorted the right half of this array. And so now the only thing left to do is to do this merge operation. And so here we go. One last time, we keep track of the left index and the right index and take the smaller value between the two. That starts off being the three. And then we increment this to right here. And then we take the 19 increment this one, and then we take the 21 and increment this one, then the 26, moving us here, then the 36, moving us here, then the 54, then the 78, and then we've run out of the right half, so we take everything remaining from the left half, which is the 90, and then we're finally done and we return this as the final sorted array. So now you're probably thinking that this feels pretty inefficient and it might even feel slower than bubble sort. And that's kind of because for small arrays, it doesn't really make sense to do merge sort. For really small arrays, bubble sort might actually be better. 
but where merge sort really shines is when we're doing really, really bigger arrays. Because when, with a small array, you hit the base case so fast and you do so much bookkeeping of doing the merges and copying and things that you're doing a lot of time doing just that. And so for small arrays, merge sort feels inefficient and it's kind of overkill for that scenario. But as we'll see when we do the analysis, if we were doing like a thousand items, we would be much better off doing merge sort than bubble sort. But before we talk about the analysis, let's go ahead and look at the code for this. So in order to speed things along just a little bit so this video doesn't get too long, I decided to just show you the code for merge sort rather than write it ourselves little by little. Like a binary search, we have a couple things happening. We have this helper method called merge sort that just takes the array and it calls the real recursive merge sort method with our starting parameters. So it passes in the array to be sorted, but it also passes in the starting index of the array and the ending index of the array. Merge sort's recursive method is going to be using these two indices to sort of determine what portion of the array we're currently sorting. So we have a few things. We have if start is less than end, that kind of serves as our base case. So again, if we have start being equal to end, then the array is size one. And if start is even bigger than end, just like binary search, that means that we don't have any portion of the array actually to be sorting. So otherwise we have at least the two elements and so we go ahead and we do the body of it. That kind of serves as our base case. Then just like binary search, we compute the middle point between the start and the end indices. Then we recursively sort the left half from start to middle and then we recursively sort the right half from middle plus one through the end. Then we call the merge method to go ahead and do the merge operation where we copy those two sorted subarrays into the final array. This is by far the most complicated part of this. The actual recursive algorithm, I feel like is pretty simple and straightforward. It's not really that much code, but the merge is a little bit hairy. So let's look at that. So here we have the merge method, which as you can see is quite a bit longer than the actual merge sort routine that we've got. So this like merge sort takes the array and also the starting and ending point. It also calculates the middle. Then we go ahead and make our new temporary array, just like we did on the whiteboard. We have to have some place to copy the numbers. Then we keep track of our left index and the right index. Those were those arrows on the subarray that I drew on the whiteboard. We start at start and middle plus one for doing our merge. Then we keep looping while both halves have data. So if the left hasn't hit the middle yet and the right hasn't hit the end yet, then we know that we have both a left side and a right side to compare. So we see if the left one is smaller than the right one. If it is, we copy from the left half of the array into our new temporary array at the next available slot and increment both indices, again, just like we did on the whiteboard. Otherwise, we take the right value and basically there's the same except we're using the right index instead of the left index. When we break out of this loop, either the left side ran out or the right side ran out. And so we have a couple loops over here to just take whatever is remaining from both sides. It'll never actually execute both of these while loops, right? Because one of them did run out. But this says for everything remaining on the left, copy it in. And then for everything remaining on the right, copy it in. Then we basically just copy from the temporary array back onto our original array. So that way we actually save our work and overwrite the original array, which had the two sorted halves back to be the fully sorted portion of the array that we were supposed to be merging. And that's all there is for this. Just like the other sort, the bubble sort, we have a little main program that just goes through some random data and it calls the sorting on it. But this is how this recursive algorithm is working. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if we had written this from scratch and I went through and, and uh, wrote it for you kind of live, then it, this video would have been longer than it already is and I didn't want to push it too far. If you have any questions about this though, please let me know. All right, the next thing then to turn our attention to is the analysis for merge sort, which is not at all simple. I hope you will agree because we're doing this thing where we're recursively calling ourselves two times inside of ourselves. And in general, recursive is harder to analyze than loop-based methods because with a, with a loop, you can see your loop and you can try to figure out how many times it iterates. But with recursion, we have this thing where we're calling ourselves twice inside of here, 
on smaller portions of the array, and so it's going to be a little bit harder to reason through it. But let me take you through that logic. Okay, let's actually begin by looking at the merge algorithm itself, which is actually kind of simpler to analyze, even though it was more difficult to code. And so what we're going to do is we're going to think about how this algorithm works. We start by keeping track of where we are in the left half and where we are in the right half. And as we go through, we're going to loop through this thing on the left and the right over here and loop through this new array over here. And so if the length of this array is n, then I think we'll hopefully agree that this is a big O of n algorithm because what we're doing is we're looping through this array in its entirety once, and we do it in pieces maybe because we do the left and the right little by little, and then when one of them runs out, we do the other one all at once. So we go through this array one time and it's size n. We also go through this array one time and it's size n, as we're copying into it. And that's really all we're doing in this algorithm. The merge algorithm itself, the merge method, is big O of n. Now we need to think about the merge sort part of this. So here's our algorithm for merge sorting. First we have our base case kind of. If we have zero or one elements, we're done. Then we merge sort the left half, and then we merge sort the right half, and then we merge the two halves together. I'm going to write the amount of time, the number of steps that this algorithm is going to take as a function of n. Remember, n is the size of our array, and we're going to consider how much time it takes. Well, it takes, we can sort of ignore the base case, checking that as a constant amount of time, which we won't worry about. Then we can look at these three steps. Well, <laughs> um, merge sorting the left half, how much time does that take? Well, the time it takes to merge sort n items is what we're coming up with. So if t of n is the amount of time to merge sort n items, then t of n over 2 is the amount of time it takes to merge sort the left half, right? Because the left half of the array has n over 2 items. So that's step 2. Step 3, the same thing. However long it takes to merge sort the right half of the array is t of n over 2 again. Then we have to worry about step 4 which we already said is big O of n, and so that'll take n amount of time. So I'm going to rewrite this and say that t of n is equal to 2 t of n over 2 plus n. Now this kind of relation here is kind of weird because it is itself recursive. If we look at it, in defining what t of n is, which is the number of steps it takes to merge sort an array of size n, on the right half of this, we have t of n again. We have a t of something. And so this is something called a recurrence relation. This is something that you might see in mathematics. Uh, some sort of more advanced math classes will talk about recurrence relations in detail, and there are various strategies for solving them. As we can see, it's not really helpful right now. It doesn't tell us anything really useful in the form it's in right now. It only relates to itself recursively. And so I'm going to to go through a method of simplifying this that I hope is intuitive based on the way merge sort works. But you can learn lots more about recurrence relations. For me, this was the hardest part of grad school was solving these things in my algorithms class. Personally, I found them difficult. So we're gonna go through like sort of a simple way of reasoning through this to figure out what the big O of this merge sort algorithm is. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm going to try to modify this t of n over 2 here by plugging n over 2 in for n in this method itself, sort of like going through a step of the recursion. So I'm going to say that t of n is equal to 2 times, and then for the t of n over here, I'm going to, again, plug the n over 2 into the original thing. And so we're going to say that this is equal to 2 times t of n over 4, because if I plug n over 2 in for n, then the right-hand side of this tells me that that's equal to 2 t of n over 2. But if I plug n over 2 in for n, that over 2 is n over 4. Hopefully that makes sense. Plus n over 2. So I've replaced this t of n over 2 with this new term in parentheses here by plugging n over 2 in for n in the expression itself. Then we have the plus n from the original thing. 
So hopefully that makes sense. I just did sort of a straight up replacement of this t of n over two here. Then I can simplify this formula a little bit by multiplying the two into both of these terms. And that would give me four t of n over four plus two times n over two is just n. I have then plus n plus n, and I can of course simplify that to just plus two n. And so this is also equal to t of n. And so now I hope this makes some sort of intuitive sense for, or maybe it won't yet, but after I explain this, I hope it makes some sort of intuitive sense for why this is the time taken to merge sort an array. Because if we have a big old array with a bunch of items in it, then we can look at it in a couple of different ways. The time that this equation tells us that it takes is the time to sort half the array twice, which is this, and this, plus the end time to merge it together. An alternative way of looking at it is like this, though. This says that the time taken to merge sort this array is four times however, time it, however much time it takes to sort a quarter of it, which would be this, plus this, plus this, plus this. However much time to sort each of these four quarters, plus two times the amount of time it takes to merge it. That's because we have to do one level of merging, and then two levels of merging. So this is an equally valid way of these two ways, I should say, these two versions of T of N are an equally valid way of looking at how much time it takes to do the merge sort. Next, I'm going to carry on with this, and I'm going to, hopefully it'll become clear why I'm doing this, but I'm again going to plug N over four in for this N in the original version of this. So I'm going to say that t of n is equal to 4 times, and now t of n over 4 is equal to 2 times t of n over 8, because if I plug n over 4 in for n here, then we divide that by 2, and that gives us n over 8, plus n over 4 here, plus the 2n from right here. So I've went ahead and I've plugged in the t of n over 4 into this equation. And again, we can simplify it by multiplying the 4 through. This is going to give us 8t of n over 8 plus n plus 2n, which I can, of course, combine those up and say this is just plus 3n. And again, I'm hoping that that makes some kind of sense in terms of what's happening with the array, because now I can say we're doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 merge sorts each one of which is doing one eighth of the array plus one, two, three levels of merging together. So that's our new version of this equation. Let me make some space. Okay, so now we have our original version of this equation right here, and then the new one we've got from doing the substitution two times. If I do the substitution again, we would go ahead and plug n over eight in for n here, and that would give us 8 times 2t of n over 16 plus n over 8, oops, like that, plus 3n. And again, I can simplify this, timesing the 8 through. I would get 16t of n over 16 plus 8 times n over 8 is n, so plus 1n plus 3n is plus 4n. So I would get it like this. And I think you can see the pattern here. The one in between that I got rid of was t of n over 4 plus 2n. Following this pattern, the next one's going to be 32t of n over 32 plus 5n. And so I think we can see, hopefully, a pattern here. And that pattern is that I'm going to end up with something like this. I'm going to end up with something. These are all powers of 2. So this is 2 raised to the k power t of n over 2 to the k power plus k times n. So here, for this one, k is equal to 1. Then when I did the first substitution, k was equal to 2. For this one here, k is equal to 3. For this one here, k is equal to 4. And for this one, k is equal to 5. k is basically the number of times that we do the substitution. So now we have this sort of like meta formula that can generate all the rest of them. So let me, again, make a little space. 
All right, now we're nearing the end, so don't worry, uh, take heart. Um, so now the last thing we have to do is try to think about what is k equal to? Well, k, if you think about it, is the number of times that we're recursing. Each time I plug the n over 2 in for n or the n over 4 or the n over 16 or whatever, I'm basically recursing again by invoking the recurrence relation another time. So k is essentially the number of times we recurse. And so the question then is how many times do we recurse for this? Well, that's the same thing as with binary search, the same question of how many times can we divide the array before we run out of array? And the answer is the same as it was for binary search. K is equal to the number of times we can divide n by two before we hit zero, which is the log base two of n. That is how many times we can split n in half before we run out of n. So I'm gonna plug this in for K now and see what happens to our formula. All right, so let's see what happens when we do that. We have two raised to the power of log base two of n times, oops, t of n over two to the log base two of n plus the log base two of n times n. And now this looks horrendous, and you might think that we made this way worse, but the exponent and the logarithm, like I said last time, are opposite operations and they undo each other. So two raised to the power of the log base two of n is just equal to n. So I can rewrite this and I can say n times t of, and here we have this n over two to the log base two of n. So again, this part substitutes here with just n. And so then we get t of n over n, which is t of one, plus the log base two of n times n. And so now we're getting really, really there. We're almost there because in this one, we only have one t on the right-hand side and it's t of one. Now, what is t of one? What does that represent? If you think about it, t of n is the time it takes to sort an array of size n. So t of one is the time it takes to sort an array of size one. This is our base case. How much time does our base case take? Well, that's a constant amount of time. So that's some constant times n. And so we can simplify this to n, I guess I can say some constant c times n, plus log base two of n times n. And so now it's come time to do the big O for this once and for all. Here we have an n factor, because again, we're going to be ignoring this constant, an n factor plus a factor of log two of n times n. And so here, we're going to ignore and drop this term here. Just like with big O, if we have like n squared plus n, we only say big O of n squared. We drop the n because it doesn't dominate. As n gets bigger and bigger, this one is going to be more important. And so we're going to say that this is just big O of n times log of n. Again, the two here can be ignored because it basically is equivalent to a constant factor. So this is a big O of n log n algorithm. So bubble sort was big O of n squared and merge sort is big O of n log n. It might not be totally clear, but this is way better. You know, an n log n algorithm is significantly better than n squared because if you think about it, binary search versus linear search was n versus log n. And so in both algorithms, we have an n here, but in one, in bubble sort, we have it being times by another n to give us n squared. Whereas in this one, we have it being terms, times by log of n. So this is significantly more efficient than bubble sort is. In fact, it's been proven that you can't have a sorting algorithm, a general purpose sorting algorithm that is any better than n log n. That's a sort of like fixed limit on efficiency. There's no algorithm that's in general more efficient for sorting than merge sort in terms of the big O for it. So on the notes page here, I have this graph that compares n times n log n times n squared. The yellow figure here is n squared. So that's like the bubble sort algorithm. And here the blue line is n linear time and the red line is n log n. So you can see that n log n is like way more efficient than n squared. And so as you get bigger and bigger values of n, 
the merge sort algorithm is going to be way more efficient. In lab today, you're going to see that. So that's all for this on merge sort. Um, it's sort of a complex algorithm. The merging method, as we saw, took just a little bit of code and the analysis for it is quite complicated. The unfortunate thing about recursive algorithms is they sometimes can be complex like this to analyze. I won't ask you to repeat this analysis uh, or analyze anything quite so complex on your own, but I think it's good to see it at least once. So like usual, the code for these is on the notes page for today. In lab this week, you're going to be doing an analysis on merge sort and bubble sort in terms of actually running the programs and seeing how much of a difference this algorithmic difference in their efficiency is. Thanks.